Hey y'all. Hello, hello, Christian Joy here. So I wanted to come to you guys and make this video because I have been getting so, so, so many DMs, messages, girl, or just literally people coming up to me and just saying, oh my gosh, what's been going on? At one point it was because, um, at one point I wasn't really on social media that much. And then also when I did come back on social media a little bit often, I was a little bit smaller. So, um, everyone was like, oh my gosh, what's been going on? Did you lose weight? Oh my God. What plan are you on? Girl, you have to tell me. Don't try to hide this. Tell, uh, don't try to keep this to yourself. Girl, you need to be spreading the world. So I was like I had planned to make this video um, sooner I was planning to make it a few weeks ago um, but I wanted to make sure that honestly I was just more in the right state of mind to actually make it um, because I felt like before I honestly really wasn't but um, but yes now I am I feel like I'm like ready to really like talk about it and share with you guys what's been going on with me for actually um, about almost a year now um, so yes so everyone wants to know what's going on Christian how did you like lose all this weight and all this different things like that so no it hasn't been I do like to work out but I actually haven't been able to work out for the past few months now um, and and even before then I was working out but not enough for me to lose this much weight but um, but yes so a few months ago actually like a month and a half ago a little bit almost two months um, I found I was diagnosed with achalasia um, it is actually a um, pretty rare um, disorder that basically affects your esophagus um, so basically what it is is when the lower part of your esophagus um, it doesn't relax it's basically it's another word for it is like basically kind of paralysis of the lower part of your esophagus and it doesn't allow for so basically a regular person's esophagus when you when you take down food um, it goes like it basically is open to it's like that <laughs> it's kind of like that um, a person that has achalasia when they they have food it literally is like this <laughs> or kind of like that and then it kind of goes like that so it basically kind of like opens a little bit and then it like closes back up so basically food just kind of like sits there and um it's something that is pretty um rare <laughs> i never had even heard of it or how it had is basically affects um achalasia is a disorder disease i don't know what they want to call it that affects one in every hundred thousand people um, so and even the people that it does affect it is older usually older people get it or um from what i hear it's like people usually in their 60s or 70s or somewhere around there but um but yes the way that uh and i wanted to share this with you so that you can kind of get like the whole scope of what's been going on and how it started and um, how long has it been going on and when did I find out and all the details so I wanted to make this video to really share all the way from the beginning to the end to just lay it all out there um, because I'm sure there may be somebody else that somewhere in this world will that may get this diagnosis and want to know like how did I get through it or how do they get through it um, so yes this is a tell-all um, so let's start from the beginning um, so in July, oh, it was like July, no, August, August of 2017, um, my parents came to New York to visit me. And we were staying in the, um, they were staying in a hotel in Midtown. And when we were in the hotel, um, one day I was, it was so hot when they had came. And I went to the store around the corner and got a, a, um, a bottle of cold water. And I'm in my room with my parents in the room and I will never forget I was like oh my gosh I'm so hot and I took the bottle of water and I like go like guzzle 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 and at the end of it it felt like I was having like a heart attack like it was like my my chest like clenched in and I remember just saying <gasps> and I was just like oh my god I can't, I can't and I couldn't catch my breath and my parents were looking at me like what's what's wrong what's going on like what's going on and I was just like <gasps> I can't I can't and I just remember like literally I was on the the hotel bed and I remember like literally kind of getting off the bed and I was just like <gasps> I can't and I remember I just could not catch my breath 
And so my parents were just like, Christian, calm down, just just breathe in, just breathe in. They were telling me to take like, just kind of like slow breaths. So I remember it was like that for a good, maybe like minute and a half, two minutes, but it felt like forever. And I remember I finally caught my breath and my parents were like, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know. And I had noticed that whenever I would drink things kind of cold, that um, it would kind of act a little weird. But I think it was because I took so much in at one time that my body just was like, what's going on? That my parents were like, Christian, that's so weird. And I'm like, I know. And I was like, you know what? Kind of, even though I had that whole little episode, I was like, you know, no big deal. Um... I'll just have warm water <laughs> moving forward. Maybe it's just my body can't do cold water because I know some people that actually irritates them. So I was like, oh, it's no big deal. I'll just have like warm water. Um, a, past, a few months passed by and I started noticing that, um, I think it was around like December, like December or no, actually it was around like November, December. Um, meats when I would eat like certain meats like things that were kind of tough I was having problems like swallowing it and I was like this is so weird and I was like you know what I'll just cut out meats <laughs> I'll just like try to like eliminate the amount of meats I have um, and then around uh, I want to say like January or so that's when things just started getting kind of that's when I knew something was off I was like this is so weird like it just seemed like more foods that I would try to eat um, would just act weird like one day I was talking to my boss and I was I think I was like eating a handful of something and I'm talking to her and she's talking to me and when I go to give her my response I had just put something in my mouth and I was swallowing it and when I went to talk I was like out of breath like I couldn't catch my breath and I was just trying to like I was like I'm talking to her and I'm like yeah cuz yeah and um and it was so weird and I was like what in the world is going on but even then I'm one of those people like I know sometimes some people when things like that happen they're like oh I'm about to go to the doctor like I'm one of those people that will wait to the very like I'm like okay you know what? let me just pray let me pray and I was like you know I'm just gonna it's everything's okay Christian just just stop slamming things down your throat just take your time when you're eating so I was like okay you know I'm just gonna take my time when I'm eating you know it's just like no big deal um and then i think it was march march is when i was like okay i have to get this um checked out because it got to the point where just simple things um just were not i was having problems breathing when i would eat certain things and i was like you know i'm just gonna go check that get it get it checked out so i went to a few doc i went to a doctor and i had told him my symptoms i went to a, um was it a gastroenterologist because also I was having a few stomach problems. That's what it was. I was having a few stomach problems too. And I went to a gastroenterologist and I was like, what's going on? Um, oh no, I'm sorry. I went to an ENT. I had been having problems with my stomach before then, but no, I went to the ENT because it was, I was like, this was a little bit more, um, more of a problem. So I went to the um, um, ear, nose and throat person and I told them my symptoms and he was like, you know what? I think it may be something. And he said, but he said, before I can even tell you what it is, we need to do a few tests. He was like, how about you come back in a week and you go to do a, a barium test, a barium swallow test, which is basically when you go and you, um, swallow a few liquids and it's an x-ray in front of you and the person can see like how it's like swallowing. Fast forward a week, I go do the barium test and I'm at um, the hospital across the street from the doctor's office. And I will never forget, that was my first test. And um, the woman, she tells me to drink this like liquid. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just sitting there. And the woman's in front of me, she has a woman beside her that has like a clipboard that's like, she'll like look and then she'll write things down. And then one of my swallows, the woman, she kind of like nudges her and she's like, do you see that? And the woman, she goes, and then she looks at her and she goes, she's, um, at the time I was 27, I just turned 28. And she was like, she's 27 years old. And then the woman goes, and then she like shakes her head. And I'm like, what the, what in the world? And so um, I didn't really, I didn't react or anything. And so um, they tell me, okay, Christian, your test is done. So I go, go put on, put on my top and stuff. And I go to the doctor and I'm like, um, is everything okay? Like. Is, is everything all good and she was like well your doctor will have like your results I have to send them to her and I'm like but you made a comment like you made a comment that I was like 27 years old I know how old I am but I just want to know why you like made it like that and she was just like um, well honestly 
your if I she was saying that if I wasn't like in front of her and someone showed her a diagram of my chest, my esophagus, or how everything looked, she was like, I wouldn't, I would not think you were 27 years old. She was like, it honestly, your esophagus looks like somebody that is older, a lot older. It doesn't look like somebody that is your age. And she said, but I'm gonna send these tests to um, to your doctor and he'll he'll explain a little bit more. So I'm like, okay, and that was my first indication. I'm like, okay. I don't think something's right, but it's okay. Jesus, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna give it to you. I go back to the doctor and he's like, okay, Christian, I think something may be a little, something may be a little off. He said, um, but we have to, it's, in order for me to really diagnose what this is, you need to do two more tests. Let's do the second one and we'll keep going. Um, the second test was uh, um, um, the test where they, oh my gosh, um, Oh my gosh, and I'm going blank. It's literally they put a camera down your throat into your stomach um, to see, like, uh, actually into your throat just so I see everything is going. They can do it to your stomach, but they did mine into the throat. Um, so I went and did the test. I met the doctor. He he did the whole test. You have to, like, go under, and they put a camera into my throat to see how everything was going. Um, long story short, at the end of it, he comes out, and he has pictures of what he saw in my throat. And he goes, okay, this is the bottom of your esophagus. And it literally, it, he showed me, like, the whole scopes. It looked like when he first came in, it was, like, a hole that was, like, that big kind of like that and as his camera got closer to the bottom it literally went like that so it was kind of like you could see like a tiny tiny little hole and then when he got close it's kind of like it spasmed and it like completely like shut and so he goes yeah that's <laughs> that's not good that's not and they kept like he goes, he had said, okay, maybe this, he's like, I have a feeling sacralation, but go back to your doctor. You, you have one more test to do before we can completely, like, give the, you the diagnosis of this. Went back to the doctor. He's like, okay, Christian, I'm, I'm thinking this is what it is, but you know what? You have one more test. Y'all, this last test was, um, it's called a manometry or whatever. So basically what it is, they take this, um, this string thing and they stick it into your nose and down your throat and you have to swallow different things while it's in your throat so that and it's um it measures the muscles in your throat and like how they react <sighs> i am not i before all this happened i had never really gone back and forth and done tests or any type of thing so when we did the first two tests i'm like okay everything's whatever god i put it in your hands these these tests are really like not that bad no big deal i get to this test and um ever since i was younger um i think it's called a whatever it was I remember my having to go to your nose throat doctor when I was younger and my doctor had always told me that my left nostril was tighter on the inside and so I've always known this and he was like it's no big deal like you can still breathe but just know that this nostril is kind of tighter so when I go get the test done um the the woman she's like let me test this out she was like, I'm gonna tell you this test is a little bit uncomfortable but you're fine you're fine so she puts the she puts it into this nose and she's like, mm, no, let's try this one. Mm, okay, you know we're gonna put it in this one. And before she had even did it, I'm like, I know my doctor told me when I was like younger that that um, that nostril's a little bit tight. But I was like, you know what? It's fine. She she knows what she's doing. So I was I knew this was the last test. I was like, you know what? Christian, just push through it. Like it's no big deal. You're gonna find out what's been going on after this. Y'all, this test. She put it into my throat put it down there and it was just the most horrific thing so yes this nostril definitely was still tight because as she put it down it was I just freaked I remember it was this whole episode my nose was bleeding um there it had been food that had been building up inside of my esophagus and chest so when she put it in it like triggered something and I started like vomiting like violently and I'm bleeding and I'm crying and the woman literally had to stop the test she was like stop it she had an assistant she was like stop the test like we can't do this like I can't even get the this tube down into her throat is some things blocked it's too much food blocking it and so she goes Christian like pretty much then I knew that I had a feeling that I, it was something going on because she couldn't even get down because it was like so much food had been sitting in my chest that had, like literally like came up 
and it was it was just whole episode. And I remember after that test, I remember um, calling. I remember texting my pa my minister pastors, and I was like, guys, they had I had been telling them about tests that had been going on, and I was like, guys. I don't know what's going on, but I can't, I can't do this anymore. I told him, I, I just had the most horrific test. I was bleeding and vomiting and I don't want to do this anymore. Y'all have to pray that I just get healed and whatever this is that's going on just has to stop because I don't want to go back to another doctor. I don't want to do another test like it just has to end. And I remember praying so hard to God and I was just like, God, I just don't want this anymore. Like I just, this has to end. No, no, no more. I can't do this. I can't go back. And I remember literally making like a petition to God. I was like, I'm going to get healed before I go back to the doctor in a week because cause they told me I had to go back to do the test again in a week. And they told me that um, before then I couldn't eat for like a day and a half before so that nothing would like build up and I was like no I am not going back to that doctor in Jesus name and fast forward a week I'm back at the doctor and I remember walking in I was like God why would you do this to me why do I have to come back here like God I just don't understand but I was like you know I don't understand but I'm just gonna trust you because you know how badly I don't want to do this test you know how we've all been praying and just believing that this wouldn't happen so we get to the um we get to I get to the test literally as soon as I walk in it just felt different everybody was just being very accommodating whereas before it was just I felt like everybody knew what happened I remember walking out of the room and I felt like everybody was staring at me and I was like this is so horrific but everybody was just super nice I go in the test she goes to put it in but she used the other nostril thank you Jesus um she used the other nostril and I remember as soon as she put it down um she my body started doing it again it's, it was like this weird reaction where it was just like and I remember my heart just being like oh my gosh oh my gosh and um I started to kind of go up a little bit but it wasn't bad and it was kind of it wasn't too bad and I remember I closed my eyes and the woman she just said breathe Christian you can do it was a nurse beside me and she was like rubbing the back of my hair and she was just so I feel like she was an angel y'all she was rubbing the back of my hair and she was just like Christian breathe you can do this and I remember it just tuning everything out and I remember just focusing on God and I remember him talking to me and he was like, you got this baby, you got this, you can do this, just breathe. Just I remember him telling him me just to focus on him and he was just like, I got you. And I just felt this wave of peace over me and it just felt like everything just stopped and that I could hear the doctor telling me what to do and things to do which I was doing them but I just felt so at peace and I felt like I'm gonna be okay. Like. I just remember feeling I'm I'm okay. I can I'm gonna be okay, and everything went smoothly with the test. And it was at that moment that I knew I just had this feeling this isn't gonna end. Like there's there's more that's gonna come to this, and but I'm gonna be okay. Like I feel like God had made that whole scenario happen just to show me, okay, Christian, there's gonna be a little bit more that you're gonna have to endure ahead, but. If you just focus on me, I'm gonna give you that peace, and I'm gonna, you're, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna coach you through it, and you're gonna be okay. And so I just knew then there was more that was gonna come. Like I just, I knew. Um, and so after that test, I went back to the doctor, and he told me. I remember it was May 29th, 2018. I went to the doctor. He said, "Okay, Christian, we got all the results back from all the tests, and we can definitely tell you that you have." Asia, um, that your esophagus is is basically the muscles in my esophagus when you eat food the muscles help to digest it and he said your muscles are completely like dead like there's nothing going on there um, you basically the when you swallow food it's just it's sit it's like there's nothing to go down so it's literally like sitting in your chest and eventually it kind of like goes down um, he was saying like every now and then it'll kind of open up to let some through to let some down but the majority of it is just kind of sitting there he was like we need to do a surgery um he said we're gonna have to go in and open up your esophagus and like basically sew it open but then do another procedure where it's basically like they're gonna open the esophagus but they need to make sure that if it's open that when food goes down like acid and stuff doesn't come back up so they only have to do another procedure where we basically fallopian term of it it was all these terms but basically like they were going to do something afterwards to make sure that acid doesn't come up and that 
um, I didn't have to deal with white bad acid reflux and so I remember sitting there and I was just I had a feeling because after the last test that something was getting ready to keep go down or just keep moving forward and but even though I got the diagnosis I just had a feeling I was like okay God I, you got me you got me and he and the one thing about achalasia is not something that is as they say treatable it's literally they don't even I don't even even the research that I've tried to do I don't really know all the details completely of it but they were just kind of it just kind of says they don't really know where it comes from it affects one in every hundred thousand people is not um, something that can be like cured and even they uh, the, you do this surgery just to alleviate the symptoms but it never really like they say like when the muscles die it's nothing to really like revive them but I believe in Jesus I believe that God I believe that he went to the cross thousands of years ago for a reason and it was so that I could be healed so um, sidebar on that um, but that is of course the doctors doing them job their job and telling me um, what they what their diagnosis was but he was like we need to do the procedure like now so he told me he was like let's do it in like a week and a half and I was like okay that's too soon I need to get things settled at work and make sure I have like the time off because they said I would need like a month off to work to recover so he was like okay let's do it the next week so in the weeks leading up to the surgery like even before then at this point like I had cut out so many different foods like it was everything just kind of came fast it was foods that like I just it would just be and I don't even know one day I would eat something and then like two days later I would go to eat that same thing and it would just be like I would just go to salt and I'm like okay I can't eat that anymore and it just seemed like every more meals just kept getting take like taken away or it was just not working so majority of what I was eating was smoothies and soups and um, and certain things here and there that were like soft foods but it just seemed like after that diagnosis on May 29th everything just changed um, at that point I had already lost like a good 20 like 20 or so pounds just from like January to like through all the testing and everything and I got the diagnosis in May I had already lost like a good like 20 something or so pounds but in that last right after I got the diagnosis in May 29th everything just kind of just changed it just seemed like what little food I could have left which was like just things here and there like um like I was doing the soups I was on the smoothies a lot um I was doing like a few soft foods I, it, I remember I every morning I would have oatmeal I, 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 that was the one thing I latched on to and I was like you can't take this away from me it's it's like it's like basically oatmeal is such like a um a soft like consistency it's like liquidy and I remember one morning because um, I used like the old oats like oatmeal and put like almond milk and stuff in it and one morning um like a week or so afterwards I went to have my oatmeal and I remember I was just like oh my gosh and I knew that feeling because it had happened with so many other foods leading up and I remember being I don't know what it was that that oatmeal when I tried to eat it and I was just like oh my god no I feel like that was the one thing that I was holding on to that I was just like do not no 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 and I remember I was just like no no this is not happening this is not happening I can have my oatmeal every other thing I have is like soups and smoothies and stuff like that but you are not gonna take this oatmeal from me and I remember I kept trying to stuff it down and I remember getting that more and more of that feeling of it not going down and at this point I remember I was at work and I'm doing this at my job and I'm like literally like oh, no 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 and it got to the point where I started to kind of like throw it up I could feel it starting to regurgitate back up and um, I was just and I had to run to the bathroom but after that point I remember I was just like no 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 and everything after that just kept going because even with achalasia um, leading up to it it would be hard for me to sleep at night because basically the food sits in your chest and when you lay down or if you're like a at this angle they people with achalasia they say you're supposed to sleep at an angle where you're not like completely down you're like you just kind of have your back elevated so that the food doesn't come back up but I refuse to sleep like that and I paid for it 
for many nights for like a little bit a month before the um before the uh diagnosis when i would sleep at night i would wake up choking because food would move up into my throat and i will i would be sleeping i would wake up just and i could not breathe and i would like choke on the it would be like food and i would like cough cough really bad and i would have to catch my breath but it was like in the months leading up to it i was it just got worse and um fast forward to a week before surgery i'm at work one day and i at this point i the only thing i can eat is soups and smoothies and um I was at work oh no actually the day before um, we had it was on a Sunday that's what it was it was a Sunday and I was at church because we had did this huge ordination for a woman at my church um, so it was a long service and it was so beautiful and she was ordained as a pastor and afterwards we went out to celebrate a friend of mine's birthday um, and she we went to BBQ's Dallas BBQ's and everybody's ordering their food and I already know I can't really have much so I was like you know what? I'll just get a little bit of quinoa I got like a little quinoa salad bowl and I got I had shrimp in it but I was like you know what? I'll just cut the shrimp into small little pieces and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna enjoy this I'm gonna enjoy this meal somehow and I remember eating and I put everything on like a small saucer and I would cut everything up and make it really like mushy and I remember eating it and afterwards, I remember going to the evening service. When I left the restaurant, within like an hour or two, I felt something was wrong. Um, it was just this really weird, like, um, pain in my chest. And I was like, you know what? It's no big deal. Let me go to the evening service. But the pain just kept getting kind of worse. And so I remember praying. I went home. I went to bed. The next morning, I woke up, and the pain was just kind of like, whoa, what's going on? And I remember texting um, my cell group leader for my church. And I was like, hey, can you pray? I'm, something's not right. Ever since yesterday, I've been having this weird like pain in my chest. And I don't really know where it's coming from. And um, I'm having kind of some problems breathing. Like, can you pray? No big deal. I go to work. And I'm at work. And um, I'm still having like problems breathing. And it's just, it just literally just hurts. It feels like somebody put like a, a weight on my chest. And it was just like painful. I go to lunch. And I had a soup. And I remember eating, I had a spoonful of the soup and I remember just feeling this pain. And I remember I was like, something is wrong. Like, I don't know what's going on. So I called my doctor, I'm like, guys, I don't know what's going on. Um, my chest is really hurting back. I'm having some problems like breathing and it just hurts just for me to like swallow this um, soup. And the doc, I remember the, the my, this was the, sur the surgeon's assistant. The surgeon wasn't available. His assistant was that I had met the day that I got the diagnosis. And she was like, okay, Christian, what have you been eating? I said, I just had a soup. She was like, what did you eat before then? And I was like, well, you know, I had a smoothie this morning every, and it was kind of painful. I said, but yesterday I was at BBQ's and I had this quinoa and I mushed everything up. And she goes, you had what? And I was like, you know, it was just fine. I had a little bit of quinoa and I, had, and I mushed it out. It was all good. And she goes, Christian, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, what? What's going on? And she was like, um, she was like, can you, she was like, I don't think you should have eaten the quinoa. And she said, I, it's, it's dry. And she said, I think it may have stuck to your esophagus a little bit more and it didn't really go down. And she said, but what you're saying, everything that you're telling me, it sounds like your um, esophagus has distended, which is basically when it gets so filled, basically it's so much food that it's gotten stopped up. It felt like it had stretched, stretched out and that, um, it was basically kind of like a capacity basically the food had been building up for so long that it was just at capacity and that was what was causing the pain that like you need to go to the doc you need to get to go to the er now so i'm at work i remember I, um my boss wasn't there when i called her and i was i mean i texted my boss and was just like i gotta go i gotta go to the er um i gotta get out of here because <laughs> it freaked me out and i remember i went to the hospital and um checked myself in sat there and I remember the doctors were the doctor came in and she was just like okay what's going on I was like you know I just got diagnosed with achalasia I'm having my procedure in a week literally it was a Monday and I had my procedure the next Tuesday and um, she I remember she gave me this pill for my throat and she's like okay this should work and it didn't do anything and so I'm like what is going on and the woman I remember the doctor came back she was like okay, I'm gonna be honest I've never actually treated anybody with achalasia before like I said, it's something that was rare, so none of the doctors really know what to do, but I was still in the same hospital chain as the one my surgeon was in, which was Mount Sinai. And she said, we're gonna call your surgeon and have one of his attendants come and help you because they didn't really know what to do. 
The attendant comes and they're like, okay, the surgeon wants you to stay um, overnight. Um, we're gonna give you some IVs, but we don't want you eating anything. And I was like, okay, gosh. So the later on the next day, the surgeon comes and he's like, okay, Christian, um, we think, he said, the last time this type of thing happened with one of my patients, we had to do an emergency service because too much food had like built up and we had to just go. And he said, um, I'm getting ready to go out of town. I don't really know if I can do it. He said, um, we're gonna keep you on some IVs for now and keep you another night. And um, we're just gonna see how everything goes. If it's, if you just can't keep anything down, then you know, we're gonna have to do an emergency service. But if not, we're gonna try to hold out until next Tuesday. Um, it just seemed like after that, they tried to give me like little jellos and stuff y'all literally i took a spoonful of jello and like just it just would not come it wouldn't go down like nothing would i just end up throwing up and nothing would work so he goes okay christian we um we feel like you can't no more food nothing not even smoothie no soups nothing um they said we want you to we're going to try to hold this out until next tuesday um, but they were like, you have to do only liquids in two days before the surgery, only clear liquids. <sighs> it was, that was literally like the hardest like week of this whole thing. Um, it was just, in that week, I remember I got closer to God than ever before. Because I was like, I had nothing else. I lost another, I feel like in that one week, I lost like another 10 pounds or so, just from that liquids. And then the pad, the last two days, it was so hot and it was the summertime. And even in those last two days, I remember I, I started having like Gatorade to try to keep me hydrated, but even drinking Gatorade was hard. It got to the point where just even liquids were hard to keep down. So um, those, I remember in the last, two days before the surgery or that Sunday or actually before then my church I go to the rock churches as you guys have heard me talk about before um, we did this thing called a three-day fast of faith so basically in the three-day fast of faith it was like whatever you believe in God for just um, it's three day it wasn't like basically in the day you you had to fast like doubt fear anything that would just keep you from having your faith and so in that um in that time i was like okay god i'm gonna go hard i'm gonna have this three-day fast of faith i am not gonna have to get this surgery i'm not gonna have to you're just gonna heal me so in that time i did a three i did a diary of two days before the day before the day of the surgery i think three days leaded up to the surgery and the last day was the day of the surgery so i did a three-day fast of faith and it was it built me up in so many different areas it was definitely hard but I did record it and I'm gonna share it with you guys um, so um, I think it was like yeah two different days so um, here it is it was literally I just literally just posted the camera and just kind of recorded and talked about how I felt and stuff so um, here it is now my faith I'm not gonna lie I I like to believe that my faith is strong and just firm which in the name of Jesus it is but it's so been tested this past few months and especially this past week um, it's definitely been tested but I believe that God is going to do this and I know that this is going to be a docu documentary that somehow I make later on that is going to be me rejoicing afterwards about how I was healed from this and it's going to help somebody else that that um, that may get diagnosed with this. I'm believing and I'm trusting and I know this has something, I know that there's something to this because literally last Sunday, um, Sunday morning, I woke up and um, God told me to read the story of Esther and um, I just started reading it and um, I was like okay God because that Sunday um, this woman or Anita at our church amazing woman of God she was getting ordained as a pastor so it was a whole celebration for her and I was like okay God maybe you're trying to have me read the scripture so that I can like literally get a like glean off of what's happening in the church and get an ordained in the spirit but um, today I realized 
when I started this three day fast that I feel like God was like, go back to that story I told you to read last week. And I went back to Esther. And right before Esther went before the king, she fasted for three days. And it was basically, and God was just reminding me that Esther didn't really know the details of how this was going to happen. And she didn't know what was, she didn't know anything. She just knew that she needed her people to be free. And she was going to go before the king and ask for him to try to revoke a decree that had been sent out to kill all of her people. And she just did what God told her to do. She fasted and she said, I'm just going to be a woman of faith and I'm just going to trust and believe that this is going to happen. And it did. And so I felt like God, he had me to read that last week because he knew I would go through hell this past week. And today I was going to remember the And I'm going to believe that this three days is going to be miraculous. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I believe it's going to happen. That I am not going to have to get this surgery. And that I'm going to be healed. And that I am going to uh, spread so much love to everybody. And this is going to build up so much compassion other people and yeah I don't know I'm just I'm just gonna go with it this is day one and hello um today is day two of my fast of faith um today was okay it was okay um it wasn't horrible um this morning I woke up and I didn't really eat anything for breakfast. I had Gatorade today. The same Gatorade I've been sipping on for the past like three days. It was starting to get kind of hard to get it down so I diluted it with water which kind of helped out. So I kind of got low on that. Um, for lunch I had broth and then dinner more Gatorade. <laughs> so I feel like the majority of this is just tolerating this eating pattern and I swear before this I started to cut out like dairy and meats and stuff like that and I swear today I was just thinking about burgers and chicken sandwiches and somebody on the train was eating I don't know what the heck they were eating but I swear I literally this whole day is being me imagining food which I feel like I was trying to push past like Christian you know what this breakthrough is coming you're gonna be able to eat anything you want and it doesn't matter um, you're not gonna have any issues so today was I feel like a challenge food wise it seems like I feel like the enemy was just throwing so many different foods like don't you wish you could eat this don't you wish you could eat, don't you wish you could eat that and I was just like <sighs> but I'm gonna keep pushing um, this morning during my quiet time, I read Hosea chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, and, well, more than that, but those two stuck out to me because it says, After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. And... It's so crazy. Well, I was trying to hold on to this word today, especially verse 2 where it was talking about. Sorry if you guys hear noises. Somebody doing fireworks outside. Um, but today I was just trying to, this scripture just really helped me because where it said after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. So today I was just trying to declare like, God, you're reviving everything in me. You're giving my giving me life life to my health life to my dreams so that was my declaration for today um it helped some i'm not gonna act like this has all been a cakewalk because it hasn't and um i've been just trying to pray and just keep the faith and i have moments of doubt here and there because this my surgery is supposed to be tomorrow morning and i'm supposed to be there at 5 30 so i feel like i'm literally at crunch time now and it's like 
but it's not over and God can still do it he can still heal me and um, yeah so just continuing to believe and continuing to trust that it ain't over till the fat lady sings <laughs> not a good one um, it's not over until they say that I am healed and I have to get the surgery tomorrow so that was the two day two days of the fast of faith so fast forward to the day of the surgery which is July 3rd 2018 um, I remember waking up that morning and I was just like okay this is it oh God, I think this is happening I was like no I remember just thinking okay somehow this is gonna get canceled somehow this is just it's it's not good it's not gonna happen so I, I had I had packed my bag to go to the hospital I get to, I wake up um, I had to be at the hospital at like 5 a.m. 5 or 6 a.m. I remember getting there and I had to go through admissions to like check in for the procedure and I remember thinking okay somehow this is this is somehow gonna get canceled I just I just know it's gonna get canceled so um, I check in I'm walking they told me to go to like go get go see the nurse so that I can get the vitals and change into the gown and all this like that and I remember getting there and I was like I'm walking to the place I'm like it's gonna get canceled it's gonna get canceled um, I remember walking there in the alarm the fire alarm went off in the in the hospital and I was like this is my opportunity I'm about to bust out of this place everybody's gonna have to get out and people were walking around like nothing was wrong and I was like okay maybe that wasn't the sign okay maybe okay somehow it's gonna get canceled maybe that wasn't the way so um I go to like check in and I remember sitting down and the woman she did my vitals I went to get weighed and before all of this even began um, I used to I was around like 155 157 in like weight the morning of my surgery I was 127 and I haven't been that weight since like seventh eighth grade in middle school crazy um, it had just so much had just happened at that time that that was literally the lowest weight I've ever been at at this age. I don't think I ever even thought I could get back to that weight. But um, but yeah, I remember just afterwards sitting down and I see the people going back and forth into like people going into the operating rooms and stuff like that. And I was just like, I remember thinking this once again that that it was that feeling that when I was in the manom getting that test done, that manometry test, that. This is gonna happen I just had this feeling like this is getting ready something's getting ready to happen and but God's gonna be with me and I remember out I, I remember the, the the nurses talking to me but I felt like everything around me had like blurred out I could hear her voice but I was just in this whole little zone and I'm looking ahead of me and right ahead of me is the doors this door key flaps and his surgeons going in and out and his nurses and I can see people getting wheeled to different places and I remember I felt God say this is this is gonna happen I'm gonna be with you though but it's, it's gonna be okay remember just like I was with you when you were getting that test done and you thought it was gonna be so horrible and it was everything was fine he was like just trust everything's gonna be fine and it was literally like have you ever seen those cartoons or that show that's so raven when she like goes out and then she comes back I remember having this moment where I just came back to myself and I could hear I was paying attention to the nurse while she's telling me about all the things that's getting ready to happen and I remember just thinking okay I'm gonna be okay I'm gonna be okay um, I remember waking up in recovery and I remember I was like oh my god it's, it's done it's done and if you ever seen like in a movie when somebody like wakes up out of something and then you hear like the ding ding and you like and everything's kind of like foggy and stuff and I remember the first thing I wanted to look at was the scars because they told me that um, they would have to do like six incisions through my stomach to get to the esophagus because the, in the old days they would like cut off and cut off here and I didn't want like that scar and they were like no we have a new procedure it's laparoscopic and they use like robots and they just go in through your stomach and go up and so I remember I was so nervous about how the scars will look and I remember I like lifted up my gown and I saw three like incisions and I was like oh my gosh Jesus you only did three of them they told me it was gonna have to be like five or six of them and I was like um I was like you know what? I'm just so excited it was only three no big deal and I remember they um they take me to I was in recovery for a while I slept and they take me to my actual room and the surgeon and all his in his like assistants and all them come in and they're like how are you feeling I'm like I'm good I'm good I was like I'm so thank you guys so much you only had to do like three incisions and his assistant she looks at me and she goes no did you see the other ones and I'm like no and I looked at my gown I'm like it's three and then she goes 
no, look on the shoes like there's more over here. <laughs> when I laid down on the bed, I could only see these, but there was more <laughs> on the side. And I remember feeling like, so just like, oh, oh. And it was like this moment where I was like, okay, God, well, what, what did, what's, what's happening in this? What did you do? Like, where, I remember it, just to be completely honest, I was just like, God, where's the testimony? I was like, I, I feel like I kept trying to find a testimony in everything. And I just kept feeling like, okay, even from the beginning, I was like, okay, or not even the beginning, but like midway, I'm like, okay, maybe miraculously, I'm gonna be able to start eating. Maybe miraculously, um, they're gonna reverse this diagnosis. Maybe miraculously, I'm not gonna have to get the surgery. Maybe miraculously, I'm not gonna have to get that many incisions and give me I remember feeling like give me something to work with here like I have six holes in my stomach right now or wait one two three actually it's five sorry it was three here and then two more on the side um, and I remember thinking like give me something to work with here and I remember after the doctors left that's what I was saying and then God was like are you are you serious are you serious Christian I had I've kept you through all this you are a lie you are good you are able to this isn't even the end of it. Like, trust me. I I remember him just telling me, "I got you." Like, I do you not? Do you not know that I love you? Do you not know that I care for you? Do you not know that I do everything for you? That I always want to make sure that you are taken care of. I always want to make sure that you are loved. Like, I love you. And I remember feeling like, oh, God. And it was just this wave of just like gratitude. Like, thank you. Oh, who? What? I'm sorry. What did I? Who am I? I? I can't even put it into words. I just felt like this. He does have me. He does. Lo he loves me, and it just made me think. We sometimes think so many times like, why does God do this to me? Why does He let me go through this? Why does He like? Or where is it? Basically, He loves you. That is the answer. He loves you. but it, So that means if a person loves you, they will go to the ends of the earth for you. They will literally jump, take a bullet for you. They will do, you know, those like ride or die, like that love, love. But his ghost surpasses that. So when I had that moment where I actually thought about his love and that it's not even the type of love that we experience here on earth. It's like a whole nother love. That's when I just had this sense of gratitude. I'm like, this, he loves me. He's not, he's going to make sure I'm taken care of. This is not the end. This isn't the end. It's just a few, Christian, it's, it's material, it's, it's a scar. It's not that big of a deal. You can like get, it'll go away. Or it's, it's literally materialistic. It's something that isn't that big of a deal. And so I remember after that, everything just happened so speedily. Like the, I remember um, that day or later on that same day after the surgery, um, one of the minister or one of the ministers over my church had came to make sure I was like okay and I remember they had um I I was like I, I need my mouth was so dry and but I wasn't allowed to have any like liquids and so I like if anybody knows me if you tell me I can't have something I'm going to bargain my behind I'm going to negotiate something to make it happen <laughs> a lot of my friends make jokes because they're like if you tell christian she can't have something she's going to negotiate some way to like make it happen and so they were like you can't have anything for like 24 hours like, oh no 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 my mouth is dry and i was like this is like too much and so i was like i was like give me ice can i have ice chips i will suck just literally i promise i will i will suck on it and spit out the liquid and so they had to like do this whole thing and they were like okay you can have it but um they would like just take like small spit sips of it but i remember back from july when I had that cold anything cold would like irritate me and so they gave me the ice chips and I remember thinking okay anytime I used to have anything cold and I was like okay Jesus and I remember I think he was in they were in there when it happened and I remember it happened I was like okay everything's good okay that's when I knew okay things are kind of things are kind of looking up Later the next day, um, some girls from my subgroup, which are basically my sisters, came to visit and they had graduated me to having water or things like that. Um, they told me I could have water and they made, they made like ice cold water and put it in a cup. And I remember all the girls were in there and they were all like, cause they knew, they knew like I could not do anything cold. Like it just would not work out. And so I remember pouring it in the cup and everybody was just kind of looking. And I was like, guys, this is my first time. And everybody was just kind of like, okay, Christian, you can do it. And I remember I had a, I took a straw and everybody was just staring and I was like, 
and I was like, oh my gosh, okay guys, we're in the clear. <laughs> and everybody was like, yes. <laughs> and I remember after that, I like kept sipping and I was waiting. I was like, okay, something gonna happen because basically what was happening before was that my muscles would spasm and it would like cause all this pain because it would start spasming and it would hurt. And I remember drinking it and I was like, oh my God, and I had a little bit more and I had a little bit more and I was like, <laughs> I was so excited and so after that um, they graduated me to Jell-O and so the last time I had Jell-O was when I had that one time the first time I had to go to the hospital and I had a violent uh, vomiting session afterwards um, so I remember having like one spoon and I was just like oh gosh Jesus she's Jesus, Jesus and then went down and I was like okay I'm good I'm good okay and I had a little bit more and I had a little bit more. I couldn't finish the whole thing, but I had like half of it. But the thing is, it wasn't that I couldn't finish it because I was gonna throw up. It was just, at this point, I hadn't really been taking in anything, so every little thing made me full. So only half of a thing of Jello, and I was like full. But it wasn't that I couldn't have it. And so I remember I was just like, we're going somewhere. And so um, after that, it just seems like they will bring me broths and different things like that. They kept graduating me, and I was just, everything was just going down. And um, the surgeon came in to check on me, like, this was like the, I had to stay in the hospital for like a day or two. No, this was the, the next morning afterwards. I had been eating, when the, well, just having different broths and stuff, and it was all going down good. And so he's like, Christian, like, everything's been, you're doing really good. Like, you're taking down everything, like, good. Have you had any, have you vomited anything? And I was like, no, I'm good. And so um, I felt fine. Like, I was scared I would have, like, throat problems or just different things. No, I was fine, y'all. Everything was good just like God and Jesus had promised that, like, and so I um, just kept like and so the day, it was just oh, I can't even explain it I felt like just like I had had that that moment right after I found out about like the extra two decisions that I was just I had that moment where I was like what where's the testimony in this and he was like I got you everything after that went so much more smoother um it was as far as like eating and stuff like that, they got better over time. Like I think the only thing that was really the problems was like pain where the like incision areas was, but um, for the most part, everything after that just went pretty good. And now it's been uh, like a little over a month now, and um, it's gotten so much better. Um, it the 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 decisions have got like I remember I'll show you guys a picture. At first, I was like, um, I know people usually right after surgery they like take pictures of it. I didn't do that. I didn't want to take a, and it wasn't that I had a problem with the, the incision. I just was like, I don't want to, I don't want a memory of this. I don't want a memory of them looking the way they did right then. And then I was like, I know who God is. I know that he can heal this. And I want to remember the way it is afterwards. So, um, here's a picture of how it looks now. It's, I feel like even though I'm still believing and I'm still declaring that it will that this whole diagnosis will be completely wiped out but I've seen in it how each step of the way like I feel like I was with me each like during the testing and um, um, like um, right before the surgery when we were doing the fast of faith and um, right after the surgery when I was like okay where's the testimony and even afterwards how he just sped everything up so quickly with like the healing process and I feel like from all of this it's just showing me how it he it doesn't matter what happens or it doesn't matter what things come your way or it, literally it will come at you fast even if it's like over a span of time or whoever else may have gotten this diagnosis it's like he literally is with you every single step of the way it's not to say it's not going to be hard because it will be i will tell you that now it literally will it's not but, but he never said it was going to be easy he just said i will be with you and i'll make sure that you have peace in the midst of every type of trial or different things that come your way so there will be trials there will be things that come your way that are just kind of like wtf like are you kidding me um but he will be there he will give you peace he will make sure that you're taken care of and he will make sure that every single step of the way you know he's there because that's what he's there for that's what a father does um so yes that is the whole synopsis of everything um it's still been about like I, said, I think it's been like a month or so today so it's been a little over a month now doing so much better eating food 
and happy. Um, so yes, I wanted to make sure I share the whole shebang. Um, so, and I feel like, and I know everybody's like, Christian, like how did this whole like thing happen? Which I feel like even that is a testimony itself because even before then I was like kind of working out and, but I just was eating like horribly. Um, so I feel like even during the time, I was so worried that during the time that I was like losing it, that I would look like sickly, but he made it work out so that there, I guess there was some type of muscle up under all the fat that I had. I'm just playing. I wasn't like horrible fat, but there was something up under that. So it didn't look like sickly, just kind of like all worked out. But, um, throughout this has helped me to be able to eat healthier. It was, um, my eating habits have changed. Um, so that's what's helped me to actually like maintain, um, some of it, but I have gained, I have gained, uh, not a lot. Only, I think last time I checked, it was like five, like five or six pounds. So, yeah, we're just taking it every step. I'm not trying to like rush or do anything. I'm just taking it one day at a time, which I definitely encourage anytime you go through anything, just take it a step at a time. Don't try to go ahead. Don't try to like pass by God. Just let him take you one step at a time and he's gonna make sure that everything's taken care of and that you're good. Um, so yes, that is my whole, I don't even know, I don't even know what to call it. I guess this is, I don't, cause the last time I made one of these videos is like testimony video and I, I, I guess this is, I don't even want to, I just want to say this is God's work. This is just him moving and it is a testimony of him just giving me peace and joy through the midst of it all. But, um, but yes, um, that's everything laying it all out there. That's what's been going on. Um, but yes, um, if, if I can leave you with anything, it's just an encouragement that, um, of who God is and how he is so amazing and what he's done for me and that I feel like he can definitely do the same for you and that, um, no matter what happens, no matter what trials come your way, just know he's always there for you and that he loves you and that that's the answer. He loves you. He's going to make sure you're taken care of and he's going to be there with you all the time. So love you guys. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Um, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and let me know your thoughts or if you've got, if you got diagnosed with this, let me know too, or, um, different things that you've done, but yes. That is it. Um, love you guys. And if you have any questions or anything, or if you want to talk to me more, I will, all the information, my email, I'm going to put below so that if you want to like go more in detail, you can like email me too. So love you guys. Bye.